Welcome to our review on the periodic table. So when we consider the history of the periodic table, one of the most important scientists is Dmitry Mendeleev. Now, his periodic table actually forms the basis for our modern periodic table. And the way that he actually developed his was considering a range of evidence. So the evidence that he considered, first of all, were the atomic weights of the known elements in his time the knowledge of the chemical reactions of different elements and knowledge of their physical properties. So what he actually did then was he arranged all of the elements known at the time in order of their increasing atomic weight and he grouped together ones that have similar chemical properties. So what he then found was that there were certain elements that didn't really fit where they should naturally fall. So what he did was very clever he felt that there were elements that hadn't been discovered yet, so he left gaps for it and suggested that that missing one was an element that shared similar properties to others in the group. And one of those would be what he called Eka Aluminium. Another thing he also did was he swapped around Tellurium and Iodine. And that was based on the properties that they had. He thought that actually they fitted better with other groups, so he swapped them on his version of the periodic table. And what we actually found was that when new elements were then discovered, they actually did have the properties that Mendeleev had predicted years earlier. And his old Ecker aluminium, that was actually what we know today as gallium. So at the bottom there, I've just given you a table of some of his predicted elements and their properties, and then what they actually turned out to be. So if we just have a look at the first two columns of Ecker aluminium, which is the predicted, and then gallium, which is our real element that we now know, then the atomic mass, he was only 1.7 out, which is pretty good when you don't really know that much about the structures. The density, incredibly close, 5.9 compared to 5.94. Even the formulas he knew would be right because he knew that this was going to react in the same way as the others in that group, which allowed him to predict the formula of the chloride and the formula of the oxide perfectly. So while Mendeleev had actually decided he was going to swap around a couple of the elements, he couldn't actually justify why it was right. He just felt that that was the correct thing to do. And the key thing that was missing from this whole picture was the fact that during his lifetime, atomic number was not known. If we jump forward to 1913, then we come to Moseley, and he actually discovered atomic number was the number of protons in the nucleus. And when he actually worked out the atomic numbers of those elements, he discovered that Mendeleev had been exactly right to do that. Because when we actually looked at the atomic numbers of iodine and tellurium, it puts them the way around Mendeleev had predicted. Another scientist who made some key contributions to the development of the periodic table was Ramsey. And he discovered argon in 1894. Now, this was an element that nobody had actually predicted existed. And the reason for that is because argon is one of our noble gases. So it's one of those gases that's got a full outer shell of electrons and therefore is really unreactive. The following year, in 1895, he discovered helium. And then in 1898, three more elements were discovered, neon, krypton and xenon. So Ramsey actually suggested to Mendeleev that these gases formed a new group that should be placed next to group seven. So these were ones that obviously hadn't been predicted in their existence because we were looking for things that reacted and these notoriously do not react. So when we're thinking about the periodic table, we need to remember a few key patterns. Firstly, elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. Secondly, that the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. The number of electrons is the same as the number of protons in an atom. The electronic structure is determined by the number of electrons. And that electronic structure then determines the chemical properties. So by arranging these elements in order of their increasing atomic number, what we're actually doing is putting them into these groups that have similar chemical properties because it is their electronic structure that then determines how they're going to react. So there are a few groups that we really need to know a few key facts about, and we're going to look at them in more detail as we go further on in the chemistry GCSE course. Group one, these are metals. They're very reactive. 
all of their electronic structures will end in one because they're in group one and that means they will always form plus one ions. If you look at group two, these are still metals. They're on the left hand side of the periodic table there. They're still reactive, but not as reactive as group one. Their electronic structures always end in group two because they're in group two and they will form plus two ions in reactions. If we now jump across to the right hand side of the periodic table, then what we find is we're at group seven. These are non-metals because they're on the right hand side. They're very reactive and their electronic structure ends in a seven because they're in group seven. And that means that the ion they form will be minus one because they gain one electron. And finally, if we go to group zero, these are non-metals and they're very unreactive. So they don't really react with anything. And the reason for that is that their outer shells are full. So they won't form any ions because they just don't react. Hopefully by the end of this video summary, you now know about those key scientists that helped to develop the periodic table. You know what the general patterns in the periodic table are and how we actually came to put them in that actual arrangement. You should also be able to recall a few of those key features about the first four groups there, one, two, seven, and zero.